Broadcast News Center. This is the News Hour. This is Trust TV News Hour, and on the news tonight. Appeal court to hear appeal seeking media swearing in of Atiku Abubakar as president May 18th. House of Representatives proposes 500 million Naira fine, seven year jail term for medical tourism. ASU warns of looming strike over non implementation of agreement with government. And on the foreign scene, International Court of Justice orders Uganda to pay $325 million in reparations to DR Congo. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News R. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Now the news in full. Appeal Court in Abuja will, on May 18th, hear an appeal seeking immediate swearing in of Atiku Abubakar as president and nullification of the 2019 election that produced Muhammadu Buhari as president. A group incorporated trustees of Civil Society Observatory for Constitutional and Legal Compliance instituted the appeal. Duplication of legal representation on Wednesday stalled the hearing in the appeal challenging educational qualification of President Buhari in the last general election. Trust TV Shafir Suleiman reports that the appellate court is compelled to adjourn hearing to allow two contending counsels sort out the issue. The report. Joining the matter at the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, All Progressives Congress, APC, and President Muhammad Buhari, the incorporated trustees of the Civil Society Observatory for Constitutional and Legal Compliance approached the appellate court to review judgment passed in favor of the respondents at the lower court. We are challenging the proper nomination of President Buhari, and, um, but on different grounds from those that have already been determined by the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. I think I need to make that clear. These are on different grounds. But it's still a challenge to his qualification. The issues in this appeal has been decided in the case of um, Amadou Abubakar Atiku against INEC. And uh, the, my Lord, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, stated clearly that President Mohamed Buhari is eminently qualified. So that's what we filed in our appeal, that we don't even know what we are doing here because the court, the Supreme Court, both this court, the Court of Appeal, and the Supreme Court has stated clearly that President Muhammad Buhari is eminently qualified. So really what is happening here is really an academic exercise because the court cannot go back and then reverse what it has decided. At the resume hearing of the matter before Justice Zamani Haruna, a new counsel, Oluwali Afolabi, announced appearance for the second and third respondents. APC and President Muhammad Buhari as against the usual counsel Ahmedu Princess, necessitating the need to seek an adjournment to allow for further clarifications. Different law firms filed processes for the third respondent as President Buhari and um, all claiming to have been duly briefed by the President to represent them. We have a letter expressly instructing us to represent the two respondents, the second and the third respondents, and that is what we have done. We represented the third respondent uh, at the trial court when this appeal uh, was entered at the Court of Appeal. We also represented the third rep uh, respondent. Uh, but my learned friend uh, this morning, uh, we discussed and he showed me a letter of instruction from the All Progressive Congress. Uh, the third respondent is a named party, the second respondent is a named party. Uh, they are not the same thing. But however, it's um, something that can be sorted out amongst ourselves. The appellate court granted the request to allow the resolution of the dispute and ask the parties to return for hearing on the 18th of May 2022. The applicants are challenging the educational qualifications of the incumbent president, Muhammad Buhari, in the appeal, which the APC and INEC are joined as first and second respondents. Shapiro Suleiman. Trust TV News, Abuja. And ahead of the 2023 general elections, the chairman of the APC in the River State, Emeka Biki, has inaugurated the state executive officers of the party. This came after the inauguration of the APC state chairman in Abuja. The report. Mammoth crowd of leaders and members of the All Progressives Congress APC in River State stormed the party secretariat in Port Harcourt for inauguration of the state executive officers. 
They danced and rejoiced to welcome the state chairman of the party, Emer Kabeke, who immediately carried out the inauguration. The chairman challenged them to go on a membership drive in order to deliver the state from the hands of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the 2023 general election. As a party, we need to win election in River State. Being a chairman of a party without a governor, you've not been able to get it right. And I want to tell as party members, as leaders of the party in the state, please, I appeal to all of you, we need to work like a family. We need to go all out to talk to agreements of this party. Our major focus is to get it right in River State. And we're here to like start kickstarting rolling the ball for APC in River State. Our major focus, and I want to make it loud and clear, no word of intimidation. We'll get it right this time. Beke warned that the time when individuals impersonated as elected officers of the party in the state is over. He said this is a new dawn in the history of the APC in the state and the short party members of a level playing field and equal opportunities. The chairman also called on all aggrieved members of the APC to join hands in moving the party forward. The state is ready for us to avenge the state. I have the feeling. Sometimes they say they're in our bedroom. We are in their kitchen and in their bathroom and wherever they are, we are there. But as party faithful, let me warn you, don't create problems because we are in party or government in the center. If you do that, we will not stand with you. But no man from today will claim that he's chairman of this party. Nobody. I've been duly elected and I have my mandate. And I'm aware he's a lawyer. He knows the potential of impersonation. We will fight him. We will fight him to make sure we stop that. Beke also served notice on Governor Nyesan Wike to be prepared to engage the APC in a fair contest as 2023 elections approach. No one man has the monopoly of violence. If you want to do an election, do it on a clear notice, on a clear page. Don't use judiciary to truncate democracy in another political party. If you win us, we will congratulate you. But if you use through court or paying bribe, we will challenge you. Nobody takes position of God in his life. Recall that the inauguration of Emeka Beke as a state APC chairman came almost four years after the leadership crisis that led to the disqualification of the party from the last general election. And ahead of the FCT Area Council elections, pro-democracy organization Yaga Africa has called on residents to come out in their numbers to participate in the poll. Executive Director of Yaga Africa, Samson Itodo, made the charge during a sensitization and awareness campaign at the Duse Al-Hajim Market in Abuja as part of activities to mark its 15th anniversary. Itodo also called on eligible voters who are yet to get their permanent voters card to do so in order to vote in credible leaders come 2023. And we are very determined at Gaiga Africa to increase the level of turnout at elections. Whilst we are working to ensure that the electoral law is assented to, we also ensure that we mobilize citizens, give them the confidence to participate in the political process. And please, for every Nigerian who is out there, if you've not collected your PVC, go and collect your PVC, because this is the only voice that you have to speak. And the forthcoming elections, both at the FCT and in 2023, gives you an opportunity to elect leaders of your choice that will take decisions on your behalf, but more importantly, that people who will provide for our welfare and security which is the primary purpose of government. The local elections are as important as the national elections. Let us stop sitting back and waiting for things to change. Don't just stay at home and complain that things don't work. Democracy is only determined by those who show up and make the system to work. We can only take back this country from poor leadership when we come in and vote in leaders who will represent us, younger leaders, female leaders, and leaders with capacity, competence, and character. Those are the people we need in our in government and we need to start at the local level. 
come out and vote. Don't sit at home. Get your PVC. This is where your power lies. River State Governor Nelson Wike on Wednesday stormed the Plateau State High Court sitting in Joss, the state capital, to show solidarity with his party chieftain, Jonah Jang of the PDP, who is being arraigned in the court. Jang, a former governor of Plateau State between 2007 and 2015, is standing trial alongside Yusuf Pam, an ex-cashier in the office of the secretary to the government of the state, on alleged 6.3 billion naira fraud charges brought against him by the, to the court by the Economic and Financial Commission, Financial Crimes Commission (EFCC). The two accused persons were first arraigned before Justice Daniel Longji in March 2018 on 17 count charges bordering on criminal breach of trust and misappropriation of public funds, but they had since pleaded not guilty to the charges. Meanwhile, Wike used the opportunity to declare that the PDP remains the only hope of Nigerians in order to escape the bad governance of the failings of the All Progressive Congress, APC, come 2023 general elections. Waiting for this party because Nigeria is bleeding. Plato State is not a subject for the bleeding that is going on in Nigeria. It is not about a Muslim, it is not about a Christian, it is not about God, it is not about the South. The killings, the insecurity, the hardship, the poverty is everywhere. The insecurity is not the thing, whether I am a Muslim or whether I am a Christian. Look at what is happening in Plato State. Look at how the innocent people are being killed in Plato. And it also happens in other states. Christians are dying here. Muslims are dying here. So, it's not about what to sell. It's about insecurity in Nigeria. And the only hope Nigeria has to be is for PDP. The federal government will launch an investigation into the circumstances behind the circulation of adulterated petrol with methanol quantities above the country's specification. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Prez Silva, announced this on Wednesday while fielding questions from State House reporters after the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting presided over by President Muhammad Buhari. The issue did not come up in council, but of course you will recall I was here yesterday to brief Mr. President on the issue. I will not, uh, I'm not in a position to disclose the identities of the companies, but there are some issues and uh, we are actively tackling it. Um, methanol, no, no, uh, uh, nobody has before now checked for methanol in our fuel. It's, it's not uh, very usual and uh, this is the first time this is happening and NMPC is very much up to the task uh, and I will uh, also convey your question to NMPC and uh, maybe the midstream and the downstream regulatory authority. But uh, we are actively handling it and I want to assure you that uh, the problem uh, will be a thing of the past very, very soon. Be a, a major investigation uh, to unravel everything and then let's really get to the bottom of it before um, uh, we can come back and tell you what is going to happen to the culprits. Uh, we know that uh, some people's vehicles must have also been damaged. That is also going to be taken into consideration in, uh, in, in, in dealing with the situation. Meanwhile, some motorists in Gombe complained that their vehicles developed fault after using the suspected adulterated fuel. Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority confirmed circulation of the adulterated fuel with methanol above specification in the country. Ibrahim Ismail reports. Oh yeah, so to, so to read the This video has been trending on social media, showing how a filling station dispenses an adulterated fuel, which created panic among Nigerians. A cross section of motorists in Gombe said they have been affected by adulterated petrol which created problems to their vehicles. Na shamai da de mota na galo kuma na shamai lafiya galo amma kwanan nan na shamai mota na tana I used to fuel my car and no problem but these days it is jacky my car developed fault which cannot be explained I think the fuel we buy is adulterated to na tunanin mai din da ake sha din nan yanzu gaskiya akwai wani abinaz ni na shamai I feel my bike 
in filling station. The carburetor is jacking and water was found inside. I even washed the tank two days ago. Those causing this problem should stop, please. Meanwhile, Nigerian authorities also confirmed that there are a huge quantity of adulterated premium motor spirit in circulation across the country. The supply situation we have, I think we are in good state. We, we, are, we, are, we have enough product in, uh, around. And I think um, at the moment, I, don't, I have not received any official complaint on anything um, related with the contaminated product that we have in circulation. Um, we have received clear directive on what to do and we are doing it and that is to say uh, that we should monitor all the movement of product being received through our depots here before we get to the retail outlets yeah we so go and check we check the product we take sample of it uh, and, and to ensure that this said quantity of a uh, small product that is uh, causing problem is not allowed to be circulated to the public. President Muhammad Buhari has ordered an investigation to unravel how contaminated petrol get to the Nigerian market. From Gombe, Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV. Meanwhile, the federal government, uh, through the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, says at least six vessels ordered by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited have arrived in the country. The chief executive officer of the agency, Farouk Ahmed, stated this on Wednesday ahead of a meeting with industry stakeholders in Lagos. He said the vessels came in with 300 million litres of petrol meant to close the gap created by the contaminated petrol withdrawn from depots and filling stations. The regulator on Tuesday said it discovered limited quality of petrol with methanol quantities above Nigeria's specification in the supply chain, noting that it has commenced the evacuation of the adulterated products and advised Nigerians against panic buying. And a 500 million naira fine and seven years imprisonment await any public office holder who travels abroad for medical attention. This is if the bill seeking to sanction public office holders from seeking medical help abroad with public funds is passed into law. The bill passed second reading in the House of Representatives. The report. Sponsor of the bill, Representative Saigyo Sogun, while leading the debate on the floor of the House on Wednesday, said the bill will positively impact on the lives and well-being of the people and make provision for sanctions against any public officer who violates the provisions of the Act, especially Section 46 of the Act. Other lawmakers supported the bill, which eventually scaled second reading after a heated debate on the rationale behind the bill. Punishment for flouting that Act, which the Act did not catch on, can be an oversight. So, the amendment here is an amendment to is Section 2 of, the, of uh, an amendment to Section 1. And I read, Mr. Speaker, any public officer of the government of the Federation or any part thereof who violates the provision of subsection 1 above shall be guilty of an offense and liable on conv conviction to a fine of 500 million naira or to an imprisonment term of seven years. Capital flight we are experiencing in this country. The way and manner our people use various excuses to go overseas. And the need, Mr. Speaker, to make sure that our health institutions and medical facilities work without people serving in public or because they can have recourse to public posts and go overseas and get treated. There wouldn't be any attention paid to our own health institutions. Since an act is existing, what we are saying is that is it possible to be a is it to us to allow a lacuna and ask say something is wrong, but no punishment is preferred? The so question now is that the bill be read the second time. Those in favor say aye. aye. Against say nay. They serve it. Meanwhile, the House also asks the federal government to declare a national emergency 
on ritual killings in Nigeria, calling on the National Orientation Agency, religious leaders as well as the media to undertake a campaign to change the negative narrative that is bedeviled in the society. This followed a matter of urgent public importance moved by the House Deputy Minority Leader Toby Okechuku on the need to curb the rising trend of ritual killing in Nigeria. This is also alarmed by the moral decadence in our society trend that has promoted the get rich quick syndrome amongst our youths. The House is mindful of the role of the Nigerian movie industry in molding behavior patterns in our society vis-à-vis the mandate of the National Film and Video Censors Board as a clearing house for movies produced in our country. The House is cognizant that a lot needs to be done by the police and other law enforcement agencies to checkmate the ugly trend. The House also is also mindful of the role of media as a tool to change this wrong narrative among our youths. The House therefore resolves to declare an, a national emergency on ritual killings in Nigeria a call and call on national orientation agents, agencies, parents, heads of schools, religious leaders and the media to undertake a campaign. The House also urged research institutes to develop HAPs against COVID-19. And now to matters of insecurity, where bandits terrorizing the communities along Jibia Zamfara Axis have launched a first attack in Jibia town at early hours of Wednesday, killing a divisional police officer, among others. The bandits ambushed a combined military and police team who were on a rescue mission to the residence of one Haliri Jibia attacked by the bandits. Abdullahi Ahmadi has an update on the attack. Bandits have killed the divisional police officer of Jibia local government, DSP Abdulkader Abubakar Lono during a fresh attack on Jibia town Wednesday morning. Similarly, the bandits also killed a senior military officer and wounded another who is receiving medical attention at Kasna General Hospital. The bandits who were said to have ambushed the combined team of military and police also wounded two civilians and killed another during the Wednesday's attack. The police public relations officer, Katsuna State Police Command, SP Gambo Isa, who confirmed the incident, assured that the police command is doing everything possible to track down the hoodlums and bring them to justice. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Cross Television News, Katsuna. And the Chief Magistrate's Court in Gusau on Tuesday adjourned to March 15th for further mention in the case of Abdul Shakur Tukur and four others allegedly found in possession of human parts in Gusau Zamfara State. Chief Magistrate Saad Garba adjourned the case to allow the Department of Public Prosecution to assign the case to a court of competent jurisdiction for trial. Garba said the police had concluded investigation into the case and the file had been submitted to the Office of the Attorney General of Zamfara State for appropriate arraignment. He said the magistrate has no jurisdiction over the case but only to look into the cognizance of the case and order the remand of the suspects at a correctional facility. Atiap Development Community Association in Zangon Katav local government area of Kaduna State continue, says continuous killing of people in southern Kaduna must stop. President of the association, Samuel Achi, said this during a press briefing in Kaduna. Samuel Achi expressed sadness, saying the spate of killings in an indication of failure is an indication of failure of governance. It has not yielded the desired result. And as I'm talking to you, by our next next meeting, we are likely to resolve not to be part of any peace initiative. Because we have done enough, we have not seen a result, and we regard it as a waste of time, resources, and energy. I will back out of it and get ourselves rooted in the hands of God to do what He feels is good for us. This, as you know, is an ongoing process. I want to tell you that by today, the palace of our paramount ruler has just been torn like a town hall, where all peace meetings are being carried out almost on a weekly basis. But just like I told you in this record, 
anytime there is a meeting to broker peace, the next thing will be an attack in one village or the other in the same community. Now, does that go to say that those that we are sitting to broker the peace with, are they different from the people that go to perpetrate these acts? That is what some of us don't know. And I felt that is what the security personnel sent in that area should be able to work at and unravel. You're watching Trust TV News Hour. Coming up after the break, how school dropout fabricates electronic car. Do stay with us. Coronavirus disease, COVID-19, is an infectious disease caused by SARS-CoV-2 virus. Most people who fall sick with COVID-19 will experience mild to moderate symptoms and recover without special treatment. However, some will become seriously ill and require medical attention. The virus can spread from an infected person's mouth or nose in small liquid particles when they cough, sneeze, speak, sing or breathe. These particles range from larger respiratory droplets to smaller aerosols. You can be infected by breathing in the virus if you're near someone who has COVID-19 or by touching a contaminated surface and then touching your eyes, nose or mouth. The virus spreads more easily indoors and in crowded settings. Maintain a safe distance from others at least 2 meters even if they don't appear to be sick. Wear a mask in public, especially indoors or when physical distancing is not possible. Clean your hands often. Use soap and water or an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Cover your nose and mouth with your bent elbow or a tissue when you cough or sneeze. Stay home if you feel unwell. Get vaccinated. Properly fitted masks can help prevent the spread of the virus from the person wearing the mask to others. Masks alone do not protect against COVID-19 and should be combined with physical distancing and hand hygiene. Protect yourself and others around you by knowing the facts and taking appropriate precautions. Follow advice provided by your local health authority. This message is brought to you by Trust TV. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I'm Zainab Bella. For more news, follow us across all our social media platforms. The nightmare that most of these private residents have dreaded for many years is finally happening. The place is a skeleton of itself, a place that was once busy with patients tripping in and out. I'm standing right now. I'm standing on top of the Maloney Hill in the ancient city of Kefi. Uh, corporation. I have I no communities where they are contributing to buy locally manufactured guns to defend themselves. Being a Nigeria entrepreneur, and I am going to be taking you on a journey to show you the beautiful, the motivational, and resilient nature of Nigeria entrepreneurs. Behind me is the Arewa Textile Mill, established in 1963 and eventually closed down in 2004. We are still going into uh, some other hideouts to see if any apprehensions will be made tonight. Let's travel down to Shekau, a community in Yobe State, to talk to Shekau's mother on what she thinks about this development. Well, city to even city. to be a magistrate is a funny thing. Yes. Have things changed? Is there more corruption now in the judiciary? What can we do about it? Well, this is one of the internally displaced camp here in Busau. Welcome back. You're still watching Trust TV News Hour. Now look at some of our top stories. 
Appeal Court in Abuja will on May 18th hear an appeal seeking immediate swearing in of Atiku Abubakar as president and nullification of the 2019 election that produced Muhammadu Buhari as president. And a 500 million naira fine and seven years imprisonment await any public officer who travels abroad for medical attention. And moving on to other news now, the ASWIC Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, says it's ready to declare an indefinite strike soon. Speaking after his Congress meeting, which held at the University of Abuja, the zonal coordinator of ASU, Abuja Zone, Dr. Salahu Lawal, says the union will not be reaching any new agreement with the government. The union faulted the government for its failure to implement the February 2019 agreement, which laid precedent on the 2009 ASU Federal Government Agreement, as well as that of 2012, 2013, 2017 and 2020 Memoranda of Understanding. Lowell noted that it's already over a year and government is yet to implement the proposals contained in the document since the suspension of the nine-month strike. He also added that the union has commenced the one-week campus-by-campus mobilization and sensitization of its members nationwide on the state of the union vis-à-vis -vis their cardinal demands and next line of action. Meanwhile, members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities at Kaduna State University, Kasu, accused the government of foot-dragging and deployment of locally developed payment system, UTAs, for university lecturers, even as they lament poor funding of state-owned universities. The union calls on relevant stakeholders to prevail on government to keep universities afloat. We so had an agreement with government in 2009 uh, the present salary structure ASU members are benefiting from was negotiated and implemented in 2009. And the agreement was that that was to be reviewed in three years. And this is 13 years down the line. That salary has not been reviewed. If you ask yourself what is the exchange rate of the Naira today compared to what it was 13 years ago, and you look at the take-home pay of members, ASU members in Nigeria are collecting the less when you compare it to other African countries. And so these are some of the issues. Unfortunately, ASU met with government, government set up a committee, and the committee made recommendations to government. And up to now, government is yet to sign that agreement that has been reached by, the, by, the, by both sides. And an academic at the Kaduna State University, Kasu, Professor Muhammad Yahya, is challenging the exclusion of his name from the list of candidates seeking to become rector of Kaduna Polytechnic. Professor Yahya told a press conference in Kaduna that he had already petitioned the governing council of the institution against exclusion of his name without any cogent reason. Yahya said he applied for the position based on an advertisement in Daily Trust newspaper for the vacant position, but was disqualified from an interview exercise on the grounds that he is a professor teaching in a university. I have written a petition to the Chairman Governing Council of Kaduna Polytechnic, which is here before me, and I have submitted a copy to the Secretariat. Now, my petition is simple and straightforward. I have requested the Governing Council to look at the merit of my objection to their disqualification to my uh, appointment or to my application for the post of rector. They have conducted an interview and I was not invited. I told them that I was unfairly treated because I have met all the requirements based on the Polytechnic Act. 1919, uh, 2019. I felt with these documents and with these facts available to me, I have met all the requirements. My prayer is I should be granted the right to participate in that interview. Registrar of the Polytechnic, who is also secretary to the Governing Council, told Trust TV that he is not in the position to speak on the assignment carried out by the Governing Council. A school dropout in Maiduguri, Borno State, has started to fabricate wheels that run on electricity. This comes in at a time when the world pushes to mitigate the effects of climate change in the environment through reduction of gas emissions by 2050. Cars emit greenhouse gas, which poses a danger to health, but with new innovations of electric vehicles, it will preserve the planet. 
Take a look at the amazing small factory in Meiduguri. Mustafa Gajibo is a school dropout from the University of Meiduguri. The 29 years old owns a small factory that's into designing and building vehicles. Beside the young innovator's passion converting wheels to generating sets for the past three years, he says reducing economic hardships and fuel hikes inspired his work. At this time in Nigeria, we have uh, a lot of uh, problem of uh, fuel going up, uh, and then in turn, uh, you know, prices of uh, transportation will also go up. So much drought, most especially in this part of the world, Nigeria. We are facing so much drought, uh, food security is being threatened, so uh, we have to find solutions. A fabricated vehicle after charged for 35 minutes can operate at a range of 150 kilometers. The factory has employed 12 staff and it has a production capacity of 20 vehicles monthly. He plans to push up his target to 4,500, but he needs support. Very well, we need support from we need support from the government, uh, most especially in terms of policy, in terms of uh, funding. Uh, for example, now uh, you can see uh, there are so many parts of this vehicle that we import them from abroad. So uh, we need a policy, a good policy, where we can have access to foreign exchange at the official rate, so as to bring down the cost of our production. Put even zero duty on any parts that you're going to import if you're going to use, if you're going to use this part for production of electric vehicles. So with these little policy, uh, policies and uh, also funding from the government and from the private sectors, we will surely uh, upscale our production. Governments across the world are also looking to reduce carbon emissions, air pollutants that contribute to health problems, and electric cars will play a big role in helping fuel economy and lower fuel costs. This innovation can also be an alternative for Nigeria to escape fuel crisis. Meanwhile, workers in Kwara State have caused a smile as the state government begins payment of 30,000 Naira minimum wage after about one year negotiation with labor union leaders. The workers are full of gratitude for the gesture, assuring of their readiness to justify the payment by being dedicated to the duty. The report. Agitations for the implementation of the 30,000 Naira minimum wage for the workers in the state have been on for long with the state governor expressing his readiness to pay but on condition that it will include local government workers too. The situation is that the scales of which we are looking at now, which is on the table, which we are ready to sign, we found out that the local government are not paid. And the understanding is that the local and state must be on the same template, on the same scale. If we go ahead and implement and sign today, I can sign today. Um, it's a choice between signing what is popular or doing what is popular and doing what is right. I can sign a popular deal today with the unions, but by January next year, the local government will be owing uh, the, the staff close to 8 billion naira, then that's when the major, major strike will come in. The coast is now clear with the governor signing the past 2022 budget with a consequential adjustment to cater for all categories of workers included. We know the challenges we face in this budget, um, especially in implementing the full minimum wage, consequential differences of the minimum wage, and in trying to pay past um, salaries that were not paid by the previous administration in trying to implement um, promotions, cashback promotions. So those are going to be the major challenges for the administration. For the leadership of the workers in the state, this is a good development that warrants jubilation by workers having waited so long. They reviewed the minimum wage in every five, five years. The last one they did was 2019 like February, March. So ever since that time, we have been negotiating with the Kuala State government. And fortunately, last year, June, the state government implemented that of level one to six, which is 30,000 minimum wage. We signed into law. So 
After signing that one, we continue our negotiation with the state government. And I'm happy to inform you that we've signed the agreement, that of consequential adjustment, which affects that of level 7 to 17. These civil servants lament how they were suffering with the little salary before now. Uh, I feel very, very great to see changes in our salaries. In fact, we are very surprised seeing the governor fulfilling his promise. Permanent secretary in the office of the head of service told the workers that to whom much is given, much is expected. Productivity is very important. Motivation is also important to enhance productivity. His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kara State, Malan Abramanda Prazak, saw it that way. He sees that the only way we can have optimal productivity is by encouraging workers. That was why he deemed it fit and directed the head of service of Kwara State to see what it can do with labor to come into a reasonable conclusion. So the issue of consequential, what we have now with, the, with workers, in fact, across board, workers are happy. And when there is happiness, that means that they are prepared to work. So there is motivation and we are expecting higher productivity. The workers, however, call for the same treatment for the pensioners in the state. And the Nigerian Senate has passed for a second time a bill for an act to amend the Pension Reform Act to provide for a definite percentage a retiree can withdraw from his retirement savings account. Senate also confirmed the nomination of two persons for the Federal Judicial Service Commission and four others to be considered for the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC. The report. Leading the debate on the pensions reform bill, Senator Ali Uwamako said the essence of the bill is to address the plights of retirees in the country. Mr. President, the, the existence of a Pension Reform Act 2004, which is not amended, amended as Pension Reform Act 2014, and the Act provides for a departure from the old pension scheme of defined benefits to a new contributory pension schemes, CPS. It also provides for a setup of National Pension Commission, PENCOM. The, the Pension Act, as amended, cannot be said to have achieved the, its objective of solving the intractable pension crisis. Suffice to say that the issue of pension in Nigeria has more or less turned a monster that has defied all efforts by state government to contain it. A cross-section of senators who are in support of the bill described it as timely, especially having been enacted in 2004 and a review in 2014. Retirees have no other means of survival simply because their savings account is just simply accumulated with the pension commission, which determines what they want to give them as a lump sum. That lump sum will not last six months, it's gone. And then the amount of money that they give them monthly is too small for them to survive up because they have no voice in the amount of resources that comes to them at the monthly money that comes to them to take care of their families. Most of these beneficiaries or pensioners don't have a clue. It is what the you know, operators tell them they have as their contribution in their account. It's what, that's what they take. And overall, they now come again to define what you are going to get and what you are not going to get. And I think this is the misery that pensioners are suffering from. And I think, like the leader said, beyond the issues we are talking about here, by 2024, that would have been 20 years of implementation of this pension reform. I think it is time for us to begin to assess and evaluate the operation over these years and to see the ills or the successes with a view to coming up with another comprehensive reform that is people-friendly, that will help the retirees and to say that the plight and distress which retirees face in our nation has come to a point where it's as if it is a crime to serve one's nation, investing the better part of one's life only to retire into hardship. 
Our savings under the contributory pension scheme is meant to be a saving for the rainy day for pensioners during their working days, their active life. The bill, having entered second reading, is referred to the Committee on Establishment and Public Service Matters for further legislative action. The committee is to report back within four weeks. In another development, Senate confirmed the nominations of Namonso Ekanem and Mahmoud Abubakar Magaji as members of the Federal Judicial Service Commission. The nominees, who are from Akwaibom and Niger states, are to represent the South-South and North Central Zone on the Commission. That the appointment of the nominees satisfied the requirement of paragraph 12E of the third schedule to the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended on the appointment of members of the Federal Judicial Service Commission. Two, that the nominees, Nnamonso Ekanem S.A.N., and Mahmoud Abubakar Magaji SAN are fit and proper persons for appointment as members of the Federal Judicial Service Commission. Three, that there is no petition against the appointment of the nominees as members of the Federal Judicial Service Commission. Four, that there is no adverse report against the nominees as record checks and other forms of investigation by security agencies did not reveal any negative traits against them. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Nna Monso Ekenam SAN from Aquabum State representing South South Zone as a member of the Federal Judicial Service Commission? Those in favor say aye. Those against any the ayes. The nomination of Nna Monso Ekenam SAN from Aquabum State representing South South Zone is hereby confirmed as a member of the Federal Judicial Service Commission. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Mahmoud Abubakar Magaji, SAN from Niger State, representing North Central Zone as a member of the Federal Judicial Service Commission? Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination of Mahmoud Abubakar Magaji, SAN from Niger State, representing North Central Zone, is hereby confirmed as a member of the Federal Judicial Service Commission. Congratulations to both of them. Similarly, the Senate has forwarded President Buhari's request for the confirmation of four nominees as commissioners for the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission to the Committee on Power. The committee has two weeks to report back. And contractors handling NDTC projects had in the past six days taken over the premises of the commission in protest, frustrating all activities of the office. The contractors, who of Niger Delta origin, carried placards bearing different inscriptions, noted that all attempts to get their payments failed. The report. The president of the Contractors Association, Andrew Ijegbai, regrets that the contractors for over five years have not been paid for the services they rendered to the commission, describing it as an act of wickedness. For the past four years, we have been waiting for our payments, giving us all sorts of excuses, but to no avail. And as it stands now, we can no longer afford our children's school fees. We collected most of those money from financial institutions, and we use our houses as mortgage. Now the banks are now collecting our houses back. We have pleaded, we have gone to Abuja, we have gone everywhere, but to no avail. They are not talking to us, they are not doing anything. So it's a very bad thing. That is why we are calling the president today to come to our aid. We are calling on all good uh, Nigerians to come to our aid so that we we'll get this money. Because we cannot, that is why our wives don't even respect us again in the house. So that's why we have come today to cry to the nation. The director of the board of trustees of the association, Prince Victor Fakar, noted that if the commission had in mind to clear the debt, they would have done so at ease, adding that the NDDC is not committed to paying the debts. If these people really want to pay us, we are not supposed to be at these gates protesting for the past six days now. Today it's supposed to be the seventh day. But the annoying thing about it all is some hoodlums, paid hoodlums, came to come and like scatter the point where we are. And it's not, it's not acceptable. But we'll still continue this protest until Aqua we met in December. 
He promised Spain that in, in December. We didn't get anything. Now, this is February. Still expecting that. A small list we gave to him to pay till now. It, it is it's, it's, it's sad. I, I did a contract in Abia State. And as I speak to you, NDC have taken glory for that. NDC went on air, channel television, showed the particular project I did. And um, they've taken glory for that. But up till now, the contractors have not been paid. Over going to five years now, they have not been paid. And a lot of us are here, been clamoring since December, asking that they please pay. Because a lot of us are dying. A, 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 a lot of us have high blood pressures. A lot of us are going down. So we are saying that Mr. Kwa and Akbabio to jointly take cognizant measures to see that contractors are being paid because a loss has been happening and people have been suffering. We are begging Akwa. We have met him severally, exhausted all means to see that he dialogue with the contractors to pay them. But it's not avail. Please, we are begging Akwa to pay contractors. We are also begging Akbabio to see that on his part, he should make sure that the welfare of the people of the region should be taken care of. You know that when there is no peace in the society, the women, they are the peacemaker, and we are here to make peace. And the only thing we are asking the uh, NDDC, Aqua and the, um, the Honorable Minister for Niger Delta Affairs, to pay our contractors, to pay the contractors. They have worked, just like the husband of them, they have worked. You can see women, these women, they are, most of them are their husbands, and they are crying at home. And again, we are here too, demanding that uh, the board should be constituted. Because when they constitute the board, who will have peace in the Niger Delta. They called on President Muhammad Buhari and all well-meaning Nigerians to intervene to ensure that their money is paid. Nigerian Insurers Association says insurance companies have paid 11 billion naira claims on losses suffered during the 2020 and SARS protests. The chairman of the association, Ghani Musa, stated this at a press briefing in Lagos. He said at, at January, insurance have paid over 11 billion naira as claims that arose from the NSAS protests of 2020. While earlier, the association had released a report that cl the claims were paid on vandalization, lootings, theft, deaths and cases of loss of cash. And now a look at the foreign scene where the UN's court on Wednesday ordered Uganda to pay the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, $325 million in reparations over a brutal war between the African neighbors that began in the late 1990s. The court's president, U.S. Judge Joan Donahue, said the preparation awarded to DRC for damage to persons and to property reflects the harm suffered by individuals and communities as a result of Uganda's breach of its international obligations. The compensation order comes more than 15 years after the U.N. court ruled in a complex 119-page judgment that fighting by Ugandan troops in DRC breached international law. In 2005, the ICJ ruled that Uganda had to pay reparations, but they were never paid. The sum awarded is below the request for more than $11 billion in damages DRC had demanded for the occupation of its volatile northeastern Ituri region. The ruling by the Hague-based court is a blow to DRC after a long legal battle for compensation over the devastating 1998-2003 conflict that left thousands of people dead. Notably, the mapping report demonstrates that a large number of civilian casualties occurred in the DRC between 1998 and 2003, and that a significant part of these casualties can be linked to internationally wrongful acts of Uganda. However, there is insufficient evidence to support the DRC's claim of 180,000 civilian deaths for which Uganda owes reparation. Total sum is to be paid in annual installments of 65 million U.S. dollars on 1 September of each year from 2022 to 2026. The court then sets out the total amount of compensation awarded to the DRC, which is 325 million U.S. dollars. This global sum includes 225 million U.S. dollars for damage to persons, 40 million U.S. dollars for damage to property, and 60 million U.S. dollars for damage related to natural resources.
Now let's join Adeni Ajishafe for sports update. Four athletes have been selected by the Nigerian Tech Board Nigitex to represent the country at 2022 Tech Ball World Series at the Departmental Deformation and Animation Sportives in Paris, France, from 18 to 28 March. Yaya Korede, Oyemade Ademoe, Obejeoma, and Salah Obukola, who are Nigerians' best ranked Tech Ball players at the moment in the current International Federation of Tech Ball FITEC rankings, will take part in three categories men's, women's, and mixed doubles. And in Ultimate Fight Championship, President Dana White has confirmed Kamaru Usman has surgery on Monday to repair hand injury after posting images of welterweight King Paul during surgery. Usman broke his right hand three weeks before his UFC 268 clash with Kobe Covington in November, but opted to take the bout, winning by unanimous decision. Kamaru Usman, known as the Nigerian Nightmare, had a superb 2021, defending his welterweight title on three occasions. That's Sport News. I am Adini Ajishafe. And that concludes Trust TV News Hour for tonight. For more news, you can subscribe and follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Thanks for joining us.